Thanks for watching County Report this week. I'm Susan Kennedy. Germantown residents can now breathe a little easier when it comes to traffic, that is. A new link in the county's transportation network will make it easier for residents to get around. In a ribbon cutting ceremony surrounded by residents, County Executive Ike Leggett officially opened the extension of Father Hurley Boulevard. This major 1.2 mile road connects local communities to the Germantown Town Center and I-270. The North-South Link will also serve as an easy access for emergency vehicles. This extension of Father Hurley Boulevard is a short road with a huge impact on the Germantown community. First, it's 1.2 miles provide efficient, direct access for everyone south of the CXX tracks below us to the town center and to the I-270 employment corridor. Next, it means improved access for emergency vehicles, enhance traffic flow, and reduce congestion in the future. The improved Father Hurtley Boulevard will also have pedestrian amenities, which include a bike path on one side of the road and a five-foot wide sidewalk on the other. For those homeowners who have fallen behind in their mortgage payments, the state of Maryland has some funds that it needs to disperse. Lorna Virgili has the story. Lorna? Susan, the state of Maryland has $40 million in emergency mortgage assistance that needs to be committed by the end of September. Now, the state and the county held this workshop and 100 people showed up in the first hour. Those county homeowners that attended received legal assistance and on-site counseling about home retention. The Emergency Mortgage Assistance Program is designed to help homeowners who have lost income due to unemployment or health problems. A lot of the folks here have pulled together most of their documentation and what happens next is that our staff at the housing department reviews all the documentation to make sure everything's in place and then it, it, it takes less than two weeks to finalize a decision about whether or not the loan can be made. The loans can be up to $50,000 per homeowner. Lisa Barnes lost her job last year and she was the first applicant of the program in the entire nation. She will receive the full $50,000 to pay for her mortgage. Uh, if anyone, if you're having a problem or if you're not sure if you're having a problem, just call the Maryland Hope Hotline. Um, it does wonders. It's there for you. Uh, and then you can apply for the program. We have a limited time before the program is going to be exhausted. And I don't want anyone to miss out on the blessing that I did receive. Right now, there are a large number of units that of homes that are in a sort of backlog. The banks haven't yet bang the gavel because they're trying to clean up the paperwork to justify the action that they're taking. And one of the things that I'm concerned about is that when they get through that process, all of a sudden we're going to see a flood of these coming out of the pipeline and see a lot of people really faced with that very imminent eviction and foreclosure. Homeowners who are three or more months late on their mortgage payments and have lost income due to involuntary job loss or due to medical problems are encouraged to inquire about the Emergency Mortgage Assistance Program by visiting www.mdhope.org. Deadline is September 30th. For County Report This Week, Lorna Virgili. Next month marks the 10th anniversary of the September 11th attacks on our nation. As our area prepares to observe this milestone in our nation's history, members of the Council's Public Safety Committee will be hearing from some experts from the National Institutes of Standards and Technology on post 9-11 building safety. Out of the attacks, in addition to the tremendous tragedy, came improvements to public safety and uh, we're going to have the, uh, the person who directed the research at the National Institutes of Standards and Technology that reviewed the, uh, the fire resistance of the beams at the World Trade Center come and talk about uh, what has been done since then to uh, address and, and to strengthen building codes. So we're going to have the person that did that actual research uh, come and talk about that, Sean, Dr. Sean Sunder. Here in Montgomery County, much has been done over the past decade to improve public safety across the board. There is a very good uh, interoperability between the different public safety agencies in the county, but not just in the county, but between the county and other jurisdictions. So that's something that we work to ensure continues to happen. Uh, there's been much more training and many protocols put in place to ensure that we have adequate training uh, for 
first responders to respond to almost any uh, kind of emergency. Kids fill their summertime doing all sorts of different things, but some are enriching their lives with real life work experiences. Let's take a look at what some Montgomery County Public School students have been up to this summer. Over the summer, current and past MCPS students are finding ways to enrich their minds and build skills. They are working for summer school programs, doing their summer reading, volunteering, and working as interns to prepare for future careers. I'm interning here at ITV. I'm an intern here at Copy Plus. I'm an intern for the Department of Family Community Partnerships. MCPS interns are learning and gaining professional experience yeah, from our in-house in experts page. at the print shop, web services, MCPS TV, the Department of Family and Community Partnerships, and more. What we're trying to do is teach the students, um, give them the, the skills, the experience, the knowledge of working within a light industrial multi-million dollar business such as Capitalist and Teamworks. I'm not exactly sure what I want to do yet in the future, but I know that the skills I've learned here will help me a lot, like uh, time management and detail orientation. You have to be really organized when you're doing these jobs. MCPS TV interns are getting hands-on experience and learning every aspect of the TV business. They are developing the skills to produce and direct a video production. I'm very interested in the film business and uh, this is a great way to see if, like, if I really want to get more into this. Lindsay Spencer, a current University of Maryland student and a graduate of Blake High School, tells us a little bit about her daily routine. I was planning on going into school counseling, um, so it's been really helpful um, working at DFCP and learning how to interact with parents and interact with students. Interns share some candid advice. I definitely recommend this to anyone that would like to just learn what it's like to work and build relationships. Anyone who's interested in working in the school system, I think it's a really great opportunity to see how the school system works. Students interested in applying for internships should contact their school counselor. Still ahead on County Report this week, we'll tell you what some county residents have to say about the proposed curfew and a look at a county health clinic that serves the most vulnerable residents here in Montgomery County. Stay with us. Welcome back to County Report. An altercation at a Germantown gas station turned violent recently, and Officer Janelle Smith from Montgomery County Police is here to give us the details. Officer, tell us what happened here. Well, Susan, it was on Saturday, August 6th at approximately 5.53 p.m. when Germantown District officers were called to the Free State Gas Station located at 20650 Frederick Road in Germantown for the report of a shooting that had just occurred at the gas station. Once the officers arrived, they talked to several witnesses and the victim who explained to them that the suspect and the victim had become engaged in a verbal argument and this argument had escalated into a physical fight about who had arrived at the gas pump first. Following the physical altercation, the suspect returned to his vehicle, retrieved a handgun, and fired one shot at the victim. Fortunately, the shot missed the victim, but it did strike the victim's vehicle, and inside that vehicle was a, the victim's fiance, who was also uninjured. At that time, the suspect fled the scene. During the course of their investigation, and trying to figure out who the suspect may have been. The suspect did respond to the Germantown police station and admit it to his involvement in an incident at the gas station. At that time, he was arrested and was charged with attempted second degree mar murder, reckless endangerment, and first degree assault. Any indication at all that these two gentlemen were acquainted with one another before this happened? At this time, there's no indication that they knew each other. It was simply that their paths happened to cross at the gas pumps. Wow, incredible story. Thank you very much, Officer Janelle Smith, Montgomery County Police. The Mercy Health Clinic is a free community-based primary care facility that serves uninsured, low-income adult residents of Montgomery County. The clinic is run primarily by volunteers and relies on donations from the public and support from the county. Recently, Councilmember George Leventhal helped the clinic win a major grant that allowed it to expand. Here's an inside look at this critical piece of the county safety net. If you live in Montgomery County and you don't have health insurance, 
you can get good basic health care at any clinic funded by Montgomery Cares. These clinics offer primary health care services at little or no cost to people who qualify. This program is funded in part by Montgomery County to help support a network of independent nonprofit clinics. One of those clinics is the Mercy Health Clinic located in Gaithersburg. To come here you have to meet three criteria. One of them is you have to be an adult county resident. Um, so you just bring in kind of any kind of u utility bill, lease, that kind of thing that shows you're a resident here. Also, you have to prove that you don't have insurance. That includes no Medicare, Medicaid or Medicare. And then also, um, you have to be 250% below or at the poverty level. So that's around 27,000 per one person. And for a family of four, it's a little over 55,000. The lack of health insurance is a problem for many of our neighbors. My um, name is Barbara. Hi, Ms. Barbara. I'm the nurse manager here. Since 2000, the Mercy Health Clinic's almost all volunteer staff has provided 25,000 primary health care patient visits. Clinic operations have expanded to four days a week. Are you going to need medication today? Uh, yes, please. They'll come in and not really know how to take care of themselves, not know what they're supposed to eat, how they're supposed to exercise, how they're supposed to manage their meds. So we try to give them kind of like a full scope of things to teach them how to really take care of their disease. Um, there's also stories where someone came in thinking they had a sinus infection and ended up being breast cancer. That we actually got that woman's um, lump removed and chemo and surgery, everything donated. So she was able to get the care she needed and just because she couldn't pay for it didn't impede her lifestyle afterwards. So. So basically what you're saying is this, this clinic is responsible for saving lives. Oh, definitely, yes. Yeah. They take care of the whole person so you don't have a duplication of efforts. Like you do a little bit and somebody else does part of the same thing you did. They actually take care of the whole individual, they follow it through, and there's not a duplication of efforts. That, and so, you know, without money, you really can't do anything. And I feel it is very important to fund places like Mercy Clinic. The proposed teen curfew has raised a lot of different opinions in our area. Montgomery Community Media student reporter Brian Goldgeier has more. County Executive Ike Leggett has proposed a curfew for Montgomery County teens. It would prohibit kids under the age of 18 from being out past 11 on weeknights and midnight on weekends. The plan would give the police department another tool to keep the streets safe, but the proposal isn't popular with local teenagers. I think the main goal of the curfew is to protect young people uh, because the fact is that there are people who are underage who, for whatever reason, can get themselves into trouble uh, late at night, and the police felt that uh, this would be an, another tool that they could use uh, to try and uh, respond to that particular problem. There are some exemptions to the curfew. For instance, if you are at a school-sponsored event or at a job. These exemptions are a big debate and the county council is still trying to finalize them. Teens caught out past the curfew not exempted would simply be asked to go home. Only those who refuse would be subject to further action by the police. You've got to be underage. You've got to be remaining in a public place, not just passing through it on your way home or on your way to somewhere else. And you've got to say to when a police officer says it's time for you to go home, you've got to say no. <laughs> you know, that's, I, I presume that's a pretty small group of people and that folks who are in that particular group, uh, you know, there may well be a problem. Local teenagers aren't so happy about this law. One problem they have is that the curfew would hurt local business because kids could no longer see a late movie or get a bite to eat. I'm afraid of a huge loss in potential revenue for local businesses. Um, one of the biggest uh, sources of revenue for local businesses like movie theaters and restaurants is uh, youth, uh, minors who are under 18. And when you have late night movie events or other concerts, plays, sporting events, you have kids going to and from those events, they end up spending a lot of money, they end up going to restaurants. Another problem teenagers have is that the amount of people that other problem is so small and this curfew would be unfair to the rest of the kids. They also feel that this curfew would not solve the problems effectively. We decided to ask county residents their opinion on the proposed curfew and as we expected, the reaction was mixed. I think that it's a good idea because most kids begin in trouble after 12. So 
if they go in at 12, you know, on a curfew, then they can stay out of trouble. Kids don't need to be on the street from 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. I wasn't raised like that, so it's, it's, I think it's the right thing to do. Some teens don't like, like to stay outside to like drink or smoke or anything, so we just like to have fun. But then if we're outside like doing stuff that we're not supposed to do, then yeah, they should make that a lot. But we're, some people don't even do anything bad. I think it's a good idea, but it's not fair because what if you just want to go out and have fun and you're not going to do anything? Because, because if parents can't take control of where their children are, then guess what? The county needs to step in, and we need to know where their kids are. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it. You know, keep kids out of trouble. Still to come on County Report this week, we'll get an update on the new Animal Services Building for Montgomery County. And Montgomery College brings home an award for its recycling efforts. Stay with us. Welcome back to County Report. Work is progressing on the new Animal Services Building here in Montgomery County. Our videographer, Mike Springerth, visited with the folks from that department and found out what a big difference this new facility will make. To improve animal care in Montgomery County even more, the county will break ground September 24th on a new animal services facility at the corner of Shady Grove and Muncaster Mill Road. And the citizens of Montgomery County and, and those in government have been uh, working for over 20 years to get a new facility. The county has allocated $15 million for this new facility, but McPaw, a nonprofit group, is also trying to raise extra money to ensure this animal services and adoptive center is state of the art. The citizens of Montgomery County realize that the economy is tough and the government is stretched. It's only been through the, the efforts of Mr. Olegge, our county executive, and Phil Andrews, um, chairman of the Public Safety Commission, that this true partnership was created. Um, the creation of McPaw to, to be the vehicle to both raise capital, to ensure that this is state of the art, and to make sure it continues to be state of the art as the best facility that the citizens and, of course, the animals uh, of Montgomery County deserve. The new building will be twice the size of the current facility. We estimate between four and 500,000 animals in this county. Um, the current shelter handles over 10,000 a year. Um, and we want to make sure that uh, they are, again, healthy. The euthanasia rate is, you know, we'd love it to be zero. Uh, and we will strive, and this facility gives every animal a better chance. Some interesting features of the building in order to provide a safe environment for the animals. The building features a 100% outside air ventilation system which means that no air is recirculated within the building. Uh, cats benefit uh, from natural light, so we have uh, the cat holding areas adjacent to window areas, and we have skylights over the cat areas as well. The building will house animal services functions such as isolation, quarantine, and holding of ill or seized animals, but it will also serve as an adoption center. A family, kids can come in, um, go into a special area and interact with um, dogs or cats that would be um, prospective adoptees. They can also take the animal outside to our walking trail and kind of give it a test drive. McPaw is letting the public put its name on this new building as well. We are selling everything from bricks, uh, one brick at a time. Uh, where you can dedicate uh, for your family or for your former pet or your current pet. And you can put your company logo on it, you can put your pet's names, uh, a brick which will be located right in the entranceway uh, where you will have it there for life. Um, we are also going to be selling naming rights for cages and for the veterinary clinics and for other parts of the facility. And it will be, a, we hope, a home where people will feel inviting to come in and want to adopt. For more information, contact McPaw at McPaw.org. Recently, Montgomery College won an award for its recycling efforts in Montgomery County. It's the sixth award for the school in the past eight years. Here's the story from our friends at MCTV. Montgomery College received an Excellence in Recycling Award for its recycling efforts in 2010. The award was presented recently during Montgomery County's Recycling Awareness Week. 
Businesses receive recycling awards when they exceed the county goal of recycling 50% of their generated waste. This marks the eighth time in 11 years that Montgomery College has received this honor. Montgomery College recycled nearly 70% of the total waste leaving the premises. Besides the more visible recycling like cans, plastic bottles, and paper, the college recycles batteries, furniture, light bulbs, and oils. All of this totaled nearly 1,900 tons of material kept from landfills. According to the Division of Solid Waste Services, the management and staff at all three Montgomery College campuses continually emphasize the importance of recycling. The college also recently formed a committee that will focus on sustainability. Called the Green Team, they will begin regular meetings in October and work to keep Montgomery College green well into the future. It's that time of year again. The Montgomery County Agricultural Fair will be celebrating 63 years of entertainment, food, livestock, and much more. Our friends at Montgomery Community Media have this preview for us. Summer in Montgomery County just isn't complete without the annual agricultural fair. The 63rd annual Montgomery County Ag Fair held at the Montgomery County Fairgrounds runs from August 12th through August 20th showcasing an array of activities food and entertainment. The Montgomery County Agricultural Fair dates back to 1945 out of the desire of the 4-H leaders to produce a county show for members to exhibit their livestock, garden and home economics projects. Some of the interesting exhibits at the fair this year range from the old McDonald's barn, the Monster Truck Show, Chase. Demolition Derby, Cheese Carving Contest, and much more. A must-see at the Ag Fair is the birthing a milk impala. Birthing a calf is a procedure that cows have been doing by themselves for centuries. A cow's average pregnancy is 283 days, but ranges from 273 to 291 days. So come on down to the 63rd Annual Montgomery County Agricultural Fair where there's something for everyone. For more information, visit www.mcagfair.com. It's utterly terrific. Up next on County Report, a feline with an unusual name. But first, are you looking for a volunteer project? If so, we have just the job for you when County Report This Week continues. The holidays may be far from the minds of most of us these days, but not for our friends at Brookside Gardens. In fact, they are already thinking about getting lights up for their infamous Garden of Lights show for this year. You might be wondering why I'm hanging holiday lights in the middle of August. Here at Brookside Gardens, our Garden of Lights holiday display, which includes over 940,000 lights and many specialty forms, are all set up and managed with the help of volunteers. I'm Jared Ashling, the volunteer coordinator here at Brookside Gardens in Wheaton, and we have so many ways for volunteers to get involved with our holiday light display. We need volunteers to work weekdays between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. to help hang lights September through November. Once the light display is open, November 26th through January 9th, volunteers are needed to work evenings from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., seven days a week, helping to direct traffic in our parking lots, answer questions with guests, and provide interpretation throughout the light display and conservatory exhibit. It can be cold, so plan on bundling up in your warmest winter coat. But don't worry, during your breaks, you can warm up with a cup of hot cocoa, listen to live bands, play holiday tunes, and get into the holiday spirit. Students, if you're looking for a fun and unique way to get into the holiday spirit while completing your student service learning hours, think Brookside Gardens. For more information, visit brooksidegardens.org. In this week's transportation update, Tom Pogue tells us about a study on bus rapid transit that has just been released. Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update for Montgomery County. 
MCDOT initiated in April of 2010 a bus rapid transit study to identify key corridors that could facilitate premium transit service. The intent of this effort was to complete a planning level analysis of how feasible a network of routes across the county would be. Many additional factors will need to be discussed and resolved jointly by the county and neighboring agencies, jurisdictions, and the general public. These discussions will ultimately drive policy and investment decisions. The completed study recommends developing bus rapid transit along 16 corridors totaling 150 miles. Such a system would feature streamlined vehicles with service similar to light rail but at lower cost. Passengers would pay their fares in advance and enter low floor buses directly through multiple doors, no steps or lifts. Buses would arrive at stations every 10 minutes or less, preferably operating in the median of major roads such as Veers Mill, Georgia Avenue and Randolph Road. For a copy of the Bus Rapid Transit Study, visit our website at montgomerycountymd.gov slash mcdot. We're working to keep you moving quickly. In our Pet of the Week segment this week, Kathy Stanhope has a cat named Potomac who is in need of a loving home. Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope with your Pet of the Week at the Montgomery County Humane Society. And I'm sitting here with Potomac. She is a very nice black cat, as you can see. I don't know if you can make out, she has the most gorgeous emerald eyes. They're beautiful. She's about a medium-sized cat, and she likes sitting on laps. She's really a nice cat that loves belly rubs. You need to come down and meet Potomac, because as you can see also, Potomac's a black cat. And we have a lot of trouble adopting black cats, because some people still think they're bad luck, which I know sounds a little silly, but some people still feel that way. And so sometimes the black cats just stay in the cages for much too long. So come on down to the Montgomery County Animal Shelter, the Montgomery County Humane Society, and meet Potomac or another cat just like her. You'll just be very happy you did. She loves belly rubs. She loves attention. She's getting a little antsy here because there's a lot of activity going on. But she's really looking for a nice home. So give us a call at 240-773-5967 or visit us on the web at mcumaine.org. Come meet Potomac or another cat just like her, and you'll definitely be happy you did. Well, that does it for County Report this week. I'm Susan Kennedy. Thanks for watching. Register now for fall semester classes at Montgomery College. Course listings are available on the web and registration is now online only. For assistance and information, stop by the Admissions and Records Office online or at any of our three campuses. Enrolling at MC? Get all your questions answered live every Thursday during August. From noon to 1 p.m., chat online with a college representative and get all your answers on the spot. MC and Shepherd University have established a joint partnership to provide financial and advising benefits to MC graduates. The Transfer Opportunity Program will make it easier for MC students to transfer to Shepherd. For more information about the endless possibilities at your community college, visit our website at montgomerycollege.edu.